Welcome back, folks. Today I have a really cool example on evaluating double integrals over general regions. We are going to be looking at this double integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from x to 1 of e to the y squared dy dx. So my inner integral is with respect to y, my outer integral is with respect to x. Now I know what you're likely thinking. Oh, come on, Zach, this isn't so bad. You've already done the hard work of writing this as two single integrals. So we could just start with the inner integral, find a nice antiderivative of this expression with respect to y, sub in our bounds, and then deal with the integral on the outside. Well, it sounds like a good plan, so why don't you give it a try? Why don't you try finding me a nice, simple antiderivative for e to the y squared? Go on, I'll wait. What, you still haven't found one? I thought this was supposed to be easy. It turns out it's not so easy. In fact, it's impossible to find a nice elementary antiderivative for e to the y squared with respect to y. You cannot build a function using polynomials or rational functions or trigs or logs or exponentials or roots or any of the familiar functions we like to work with that has this guy as its derivative. It's just not possible. So what do we do? If we can't find an antiderivative for this function with respect to y, how are we supposed to evaluate this inner integral? Are we stuck? Do we just quit mathematics forever? Fortunately, no, there's another way. We can't find an antiderivative for this expression with respect to y, but we can find an antiderivative for this expression with respect to x. So why don't we try switching the order of integration? To do that, we know that we have to draw out our region. This is always the first step. So let's take a closer look at our bounds. From our inner integral, we can see that y is moving from y equals x up to y equals 1. Well, y equals x is this line here, and y equals 1 is this line here. We integrate from the lower bound to the upper bound. So we get an arrow pointing bottom to top. Now, what about the outer integral? What's x doing? We can see that x is moving from 0 to 1. So x equals 0 is the y-axis. x equals 1 is over here you can see that we're actually going to be integrating over this triangular region. Now currently, our inner integral is written with respect to y, meaning we're viewing this as a region of type 1. But now we want to switch the order. We want to view this as a region of type 2. Well, if I draw this arrow moving from left to right, you can see that x is bounded by this left curve, x equals 0, and this right curve, x equals y. Ah, so this is going to be our new inner integral when we switch the order. We have the integral from 0 to y of e to the y squared dx. Okay, well what's y doing? We can see that over this triangular region, y moves from 0 to 1. So my outer integral is the integral from 0 to 1 of this expression dy. Alright, let's try our original plan again we'll find an antiderivative for this expression, but now we're integrating with respect to x. An antiderivative for e to the y squared with respect to x is simply x e to the y squared. So we can rewrite this expression as the integral from 0 to 1. We use our antiderivative x e to the y squared evaluated from 0 to y dy. By subbing in our bounds, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of y e to the y squared minus 0 e to the y squared, which is, of course, the same as the integral from 0 to 1 of y e to the y squared dy. Oh, and now check it out, folks. A small miracle has occurred. Before, we weren't able to find an antiderivative for e to the y squared with respect to y. Now, by switching the order, we've introduced an extra y term here. This is going to make all the difference. With this extra y term, we can now use the substitution rule to evaluate this integral. Let's give it a try. Okay, folks, by switching the order of integration, we've managed to rewrite our double integral as the integral from 0 to 1 of y e to the y squared dy. And now we're going to evaluate this thing using substitution. We'll let u be this expression up here. u is going to be y squared. If this is the case, then du is 2y dy, or in other words, 1 over 2y du is equal to dy. So I can replace this dy term with 1 over 2y du. I get the integral of y e to the u times 1 over 2y du, and you can see we're going to get some cancellation here, right? 
Before moving on, what are the bounds of our new integral? When we switched from y to u, how do the bounds change? Well, if y was 0 before, then u, which is y squared, is also going to be 0. Our lower bound is 0. If y was 1 before, then u, which is y squared, is also going to be 1. So our bounds actually didn't change this time, but it's always important to remember that they could change when making one of these substitutions. So we have 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the u du. Ah, oh, well this isn't so hard. An antiderivative of e to the u with respect to u is e to the u. This gives us 1 half times e to the u evaluated from 0 to 1, which is 1 half e to the 1 minus e to the 0, or in other words, 1 half times e minus 1. Pretty amazing, huh? We started with a seemingly impossible double integral, and by switching the order, we turned it into a much more manageable problem.